One of my early childhood memories was of my father taking trays of fruit to visit his friend in prison. We were in Durban on holiday, and I couldn't understand why he had a friend in jail. And so he explained. Through the years, the fruit changed to letters, as Raymond Sutner spent over eleven years in prison or house arrest. Reading this book, I felt like I was watching a pencil sketch filling up with colour. Yet the vast majority of readers won't be drawn to the narrative because of their childhood memories. So here's why it's a must-read. Inside Apartheid's Prison by Raymond Sutner was first published in 2002, and now 15 years later, with so much having changed in our country, it's fitting that there's a new edition. The updated introduction starts with Sutner's painful choice to break ties with the political parties that had once been so much a part of who he was. Sutner writes, "The motives for my breach with these organisations were, in essence, the same as the reasons why I joined them, in order to act with integrity." The author links South Africa's present to the past. There are no answers, no pat solutions, just the author's truth. Before reading the first page, I felt a slight trepidation that inside Apartheid's prison may read like a political textbook with lots of rhetoric. Not at all. Satner's writing is succinct, crystal clear, and the book is one of those through-the-night, can't-put-down page turners. There isn't a trace of self-pity or boasting. Satner just says it how it was for him. He was a young Jewish man, a lecturer at Natal University during the day, and printing illegal literature at night. He led this double life for four years until his arrest. Satner describes his torture and interrogation and detention almost clinically. There was nothing in my own life experience to prepare me for the ordeal of falling into the hands of a group of single-minded sadists. Two of the chapters in the book are the letters he sent from prison. The first batch from 1976 to 1982, and again from 1986 to 1988. I know others are experiencing worse. Sutner writes, yet it wasn't only the political prisoners who suffered, but also the families who sent their letters from outside of apartheid's prison. As a prisoner stripped of physical freedom, a lot of time is spent in the inmate's head, and Sutner had years to reflect on his choice, his convictions, and the meaning he derived from them. Were his sustenance. I sometimes sit in my cell after lockup, and I wonder what more one could want of life. Inside Apartheid's prison is deeply moving. It felt like paging through an album of South Africa. Figures like Joe Slover and Nelson Mandela don't loom larger than life; rather, they reside comfortably within the pages. The book tells the story of ordinary people displaying extraordinary courage and our country's hard-earned proud heritage. Inside Apartheid's prison reminds me of a quote my father used to repeat, that of Edmund Burke: "The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing."